Grist.com has quite a story here about Trump's biggest flip-flop yet. And I have to admit that I didn't know this until yesterday. They say, as negotiators headed to Copenhagen in December 2009 to forge a global climate pact, concerned U.S. business leaders and liberal luminaries took out a full-page ad in the New York Times calling for aggressive climate action. In an open letter to President Obama and the U.S. Congress, they declared, quote, If we fail to act now, it is scientifically irrefutable that there will be catastrophic and irreversible consequences for humanity and our planet. One of the signatories of that letter, Donald Trump. Also signed by Trump's three adult children, the letter called for passage of U.S. climate legislation, investment in the clean energy economy, and leadership to inspire the rest of the world to join the fight against climate change. Quote, we support your effort to ensure meaningful and effective measures to control climate change, an immediate challenge facing the United States and the world today, the letter tells the President and Congress. Please allow us, the United States of America, to serve in modeling the change necessary to protect humanity and our planet. So, at the bottom of this ad, there's like a list. It's in very tiny font. And you see all of the all of the celebrities that sign the letter that urges President Obama to take immediate action on climate change. And yeah, you see his name. It's in alphabetical order. You go down towards the bottom and you see Donald Trump. This was 2009. This was not that long ago. Donald Trump is like Hillary Clinton in that you can find him taking any position on any issue. It really is incredible. Even the ones where people think, no, come on, that one he's been consistent on. Like, for example, TPP. I naively thought about TPP. Like, oh, no, that one he seems to be pretty consistent on, that he's more protectionist when it comes to trade. Nope. Well, first of all, let, recently he said, we're going to renegotiate NAFTA. Anyway, no, I spoke to the, uh, the Prime Minister of Canada and the President of Mexico, and they said we shouldn't do it, so we're not going to do it. <laughs> like, wait, what? He said he was going to pull out of NAFTA, and he's like, yeah, we're not pulling out of NAFTA. So that alone is enough hypocrisy on, um, on the issue of trade. But no, it turns out he wrote in like 2012, I think it was, or 2011 or something like that, uh, an article where he calls, similar to like Hillary Clinton did in private speeches to Wall Street, for totally free and open trade borders. No tariffs, no rules, just like, hey, it should be totally open trade borders so that business leaders can go wherever they want if they want to go to Bangladesh and pay people 37 cents an hour to do work that somebody here in the U.S. would need $18 an hour to do. That's fine. So he's been on every side of every single goddamn issue. And this is one that even I was like, oh, really? Are we serious here? I knew that at one of his golf courses, they, like, got a seawall so that, you know, if the sea level were to rise, it would, they would, the course would be protected. But that one I thought like, okay, maybe like the people who work at the golf course made that decision and he didn't even necessarily have to sign off on it or he took one look and just said whatever. Um, but this is an instance where no, it's direct. Like he's signed on to the letter which is urging Obama to take immediate action on climate change. And again, this isn't that long ago, 2009. So th the ultimate conclusion about Trump is, look, he's... He's an amorphous, ideology-less, unprincipled, silly person. Like, he doesn't really care about actual political issues. You think he really has, you know, strong opinions on the fucking marginal tax rate and on various uh, economic trade deals and on the kind of healthcare system we should have and on what we should do in terms of foreign policy. No, he's really just a a narcissistic man-child who, to him, this is all like a popularity contest. You know? Like, oh, I'm president, so now I'm the leader, and you guys like me, right? I want to please, I want to please everybody, and I want you to like me, but I'm not going to do the, the hard work and fix the policies that would actually make people like me. So, I'm, I don't know, I'm just whoever's around me. I just want them to be pleased. So, you know, back in 09, I guess what? He's doing The Apprentice at the time. He's more within, like, a Hollywood-type circle with 
other famous people around him and how do you fit in among the Hollywood crowd? Well, one of the things is they tend to be left leaning and you say, yo, yeah, no, climate change. Yeah, totally. No, no, no. Climate change is a huge problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys still like me? Anyway, look, see, I signed a letter and uh, see, it, I'm telling Obama, you better do something about that climate because it's all about what environment he's in, you know? So during the campaign, uh, when he's out there doing rallies, he always knows how to hit the notes that get the rally crowds to just fucking explode. Whether lock her up, talking about Hillary, yeah, lock her up, woo! Or he talks about, you know, hits China, hits radical Islamic terrorism, uh, hits NAFTA and TPP, because he, he was able to, you know, test it out during his speeches. Hey, what are these guys like? What do they respond to? And he found the things that they respond to, and he would just keep hitting those themes over and over and over. And so the rally comes, yeah, yeah, and that's why he came across as a populist a right-wing populist, because he would say some, say some things like, we're not going to cut Social Security or Medicare, where other Republicans wouldn't say it. And that's one of the reasons why he won, because he would buck orthodoxy in that sense. But he was only doing it because that was the fucking crowd in front of him. So now, who's he surrounded by all day, every day? For one thing, the generals, who always want more war. Neocons in the deep state, who always want more war. Goldman Sachs advisors who want to rig the economy for Wall Street and and screw you over and make corrupt deals and put money in their own pocket and raid the treasury for themselves. Um, so he's trying to please all those people. And he's trying to please the fucking clowns on uh, mainstream media and corporate media because he watches six hours a day of that shit. So even though he presents like, I don't care, I don't even care, fake news. No, he fucking hates it when anybody says anything negative about him on TV. Which is why, for example, remember when he got those people were fucking fawning over him when he decided to bomb the Syrian government because the people on TV are idiotic. Uh, so he bombs the Syrian government, everybody praises him, and then guess what? Later on, he was in a bind, uh, a few weeks later, and he bombed the Syrian government again. Why would he do that? Out of the blue, yeah, yeah, just bomb him. Whoops! Well, he did it because he got praised the first time he did it, and he keeps seeing all this negative coverage on TV, he's like, fuck it, bomb again. So, he's just, he's a man-child. He's a man-child. Hey, who's in my immediate vicinity? I don't know, I'll try to please you. Well, guess what? All the things he's doing now that the people in his inner circle and the establishment love. Oh, yay! He just signed away internet privacy rights for corporations to try to sell you more shit. Only, like, 7% of Americans agree with that, but yay, yippee-skippy, isn't that great? Oh, shit! His healthcare bill has a 17% approval rating. But it's okay, we like it, because insurance companies like it, yippee skippy. All those things he's doing, people around him like it, but the American public are like, fuck you! So he's in for a rude awakening if he keeps acting the way he's acting. Because, here's what's gonna happen. People are gonna say, oh, you were a bullshitter all along, we don't like you, and they're gonna vote his ass out. So, this is just another example, man. Just out and out hypocrisy, because he has no core, he has no values, he has no real beliefs, He's just an amorphous blob floating through space-time. Uh, I don't know, you want me to do this? Tremendous. I don't know, you want me to do that? Unbelievable, let me just tell you. So... Uh, a malignant, narcissistic demagogue is our president.